Hello, welcome to the Perfect Genetics Challenge, Generation 2, Episode 21. In the previous episode, Don and his travelling party moved across the road from Carla's place to where James is now living with his fiancée and other members of that household. And of course, James is Carla's ex-husband and the father of Don's four grandchildren who have just recently aged up to teen. Now here's Don chatting with his future daughter-in-law, the plant Sim Mabel, and behind Mabel in the blue t-shirt is Daryl. He is Don's grandson and the son of Don's daughter, Cindy, who is the heir to Olivia. And Cindy has her own heir now, who is a child, but she'll be ageing up to teen as soon as Don and his travelling party, made up of his two grandchildren, Daryl and Denise, and their imaginary friends made real, Riley and Byron. Don's getting to know Mabel quite well. And of course, James is Don's son, and he is the only member of this household that is related to Don in any way. Before their engagements, all regular members of this household had no other sims in their family trees. However, they all initially came from Donna's house and they moved into this other house when Donna married Gary. So the two little girls, the children, are older than all of the children that I've just aged up because the two children in this house were already children before any of the other children we've just aged up to teen were even born. So they're well overdue for aging up and I'm really keen for them to age up and I'm also keen for the engaged couples to get married. So that is why we are in this house. Daryl's still sleeping. There's two beds in this bedroom. Looks like Daryl and Byron have been sharing the room for the night. Here's James. He's been joined by his niece, Denise, and his fiancée, Mabel. Those doors either lead into bedrooms or bathrooms. I'll take a moment or two here now to give you an overview of the house, starting at the roof. And this is the top floor that's mainly bedrooms and bathrooms. There's a TV there, though. And the second top floor, this is mainly devoted to bedrooms and bathrooms. And this is the level where we've got the dining room, kitchen and a little living room in the top right corner. This one is the ground floor because it's got the entrance. On the left there's the stairs going up and on the right you've got some stairs going down to the basements. And it's on a foundation and now we're in the basements. That red room is the magic room and you can see the garden on the left which is goes to that down a level and the sims are working in that middle bit where they've got the chemistry tables and there's other skilling objects on this floor as well. Now the next floor down has is almost empty but it's got a nectar making machine and then and garden and then the floor below this one is for fun. There is a swimming pool and a dance floor and some music. And on the bottom basement, you've got the wishing well, tree of prosperity and the bottom of the swimming pool area. There's a little bathroom in there as well. We'll just quickly flick back up to give you another look at everything. The, you can see how close the fence is. The original building, the one that's on the exchange, has got the fence close all the way around the house. But I've placed it on a bigger lot in this game so that there's extra space around it. Looks like they've got a green dragon and there's a dog and there's a puppy as well. And that's our evil plant sim fairy. She'll be aging up to teen after the wedding, which we will be having shortly. And Daryl has decided it's time to try out the swimming pool. And I was sort of a little bit concerned that he might drown. And if he jumps high enough on that diving board, he'll go up through the ceiling. His plumb bob's poking through the ceiling as it is. And there he goes. He just missed putting his head up through the floor upstairs. Seems to be enjoying his swim. Just treading water. Bit of the old breaststroke. Is he going to get out? Yes, out he hops. Doesn't need a ladder. Now we can go try out the diving board again. See how he's going to dive in this time. Oh, that was a nice dive. 
I think that's enough of a swim for him now. He can hop out and have a bit of a rest on that chair that's sitting there so invitingly. And he doesn't need a ladder to get out. After Daryl had had a nice but short rest, he went upstairs to the magic room where he found Riley reading something on his tablet. Daryl decided it was time to learn a bit about alchemy. And after reading the alchemy book, he launched himself into creating his very first elixir. It took him ages to mix it because he had to add the ingredients a little bit at a time and just keep mixing and mixing. But eventually he ended up with a perfectly mixed vial of bliss. And then it was time to get ready for the wedding. This household had a lot of celebrations planned over the next few days. There were two engaged couples to be married and two birthdays to be had before it was going to be time for Don and his traveling party to move on. The marriage of the two imaginary friends, Matteo and Connie, was to be celebrated at the little wedding venue that I built recently. We've seen a few weddings in, in this venue. I must confess, not much of this wedding went to plan and it was a bit chaotic, but they did manage to get married, so that was the main thing. Unfortunately, the two little bridesmaids tended to ignore the happy couple, but that was okay. They were just little children. They'll be teens shortly. I just had to get the wedding out of the way first first so I could use the bridesmaids dresses that I'd put on them as children. And here they are exchanging rings and now they are a married husband and wife. And now it's time for a kiss and a lot of clapping and cheering and throwing of rice by the guests. I'm sure they're going to be very happy in their new home in Vice City. I was wondering where the second bridesmaid got to and I just found out it looks like she ignored the proceedings altogether. Lucky I recolored Donna's wedding dress. She's wearing it again to another wedding. Everybody seems to be happy and enjoying themselves at the ceremony now that it's over. And now it's time for them to make their way down this end of the room to cut the cake. The bride and groom seem to be having a few problems making their way down to the cake. Connie's made it down there, but Matteo, well, she seems to have lost him already. He's having so much trouble making his way through the crowd. He made it, finally. And everybody's going to gather around. There's Donna there with just turned it back to us in the pink dress. It used to be her white wedding dress that I recolored. Oh, there's the cake. It's now been cut. I'm going to have to fix this area, I think. There's not enough room here for everybody to stand around the cake. It's always a bit of a problem. Although this pair have the surname of Walker, that's only because their imaginary friends made real. They're not related to anybody else, just the, each other now that they're married. Now, of course, James and his fiancée, Mabel, are here. That's James heading over there to the cake. He's going to be the DJ so they can have music to dance with. And I've asked Mabel twice now to put food on that buffet table and she's ignored me totally. Hopefully I'll get some food on it before the end of the wedding. I've noticed that Mabel is very good at ignoring instructions and she's not absent-minded. She's just Mabel and Mabel does what Mabel wants when she wants to do it. Even after the buffet table was served with food, nobody seemed to be interested in eating it. So we moved on to the dancing. The chocolate fountain was quite popular though. This is a really bizarre wedding. I was very surprised to see them all dancing so enthusiastically a long time before there was any music to dance to. That male plant Sim you see walking around, that's Ajax Greenbottle. I made him in CAS and he lives in the house across the street from the household where Mabel and co live. And that's Sim in the blue dress with the reddish 
barn on top of a head. She lives next door to them. I was hoping that she might end up marrying somebody, and I thought Green Bottle might marry someone too. But so far, they've remained determinedly single. They're just extras that I put in that weren't related to the main family. That blonde teen in the bright pink dress with the fairy pink wings, that is Elsie, who is the daughter of Gary and Donna. And there's Donna dancing in the middle of the floor there with her pink and white ex-wedding dress on. She's also a fairy. And it looks like Charlie's there as well. I didn't, hadn't noticed him before. He's got the blue wings. That's Gary and Donna's son, Elsie's brother. They, of course, are also Don's grand children. And Denise is another one of Don's grandchildren. There she is standing there with Riley. There's definitely a romance going on between that pair. I'll have to keep an eye on them and see how things go. We might have another wedding brewing, but they're teens at the moment and that nothing much more is going to happen between them until they're young adults. We've got to go back to Appaloosa Plains first. There'll be two younger sisters of Denise who need to get aged up to teen before Denise will be aging up to young adult and they're having a slow dance and everybody seems to be moving onto the dance floor now. That's Daryl there in the dark outfit dancing with the sim in the purple. She is one of the imaginary friends of either Elsie or Charlie and she lives in the house with Donna. I haven't seen Gary here at this wedding. I'm not sure why he didn't turn up. He was invited. Yes, I think he was. But the rest of his household seems to be here. By this stage, I've given up on trying to get them to eat. So it's time for the bride and groom to start the dancing off by doing their bridal dance. Shame everybody else has been dancing for most of the duration of the wedding already. But anyways, off they go. And there's James. He's now starting to play the music. And so guess what happens? They stop dancing and they decide to watch James do the DJing. There's a few of them still keep dancing, but not many. And the ones who wanted to watch James at work on the DJ booth, they just stand on the dance floor and watch. But there's our bride and groom. They don't mind. They've got each other and they're dancing. And there's the other little couple there, the couple of teens on the left, having a nice slow dance as they gaze into each other's eyes. That sim just behind Denise's head is a paparazzi that just turned up. Otherwise, I think that you should be fairly familiar with most of the other sims here if you've been watching all of the episodes because most of them have lived in houses that Don and his travelling group have been staying in at some stage of the proceedings. I didn't in invite James's ex-wife and family because I thought they might be a bit upset with his presence here, especially since he is going to get married to his second wife in a day or two's time. It'll be in this episode, but after the birthdays. And the two little bridesmaids, they're standing together. They will be becoming teens the day after this wedding. We'll be celebrating a birthday party in their home. And it's getting late and the teenage couple have gone outside onto the veranda to have a few moments together without the eyes of the rest of the wedding party watching their every move. They are definitely enjoying each other's company. But let's leave them to it, head off home and get ready for tomorrow's parties. The next morning, everybody headed off to work or school. James had to go to work in the science facility. His lifetime wish is to become a creature robot crossbreeder and the children and teens obviously had to go to school. But we will be having birthday parties when school is over. This group of houses is high up. Not on the top of the hills, but part of the way up. So it's a downward road to the school from the house. Apart from James, the other grown-up sims worked from home, so nobody else needed to rush off to work. And here's the newlyweds setting up the afternoon's party. And this is when I made a discovery that I wasn't all that happy with. I discovered that Connie had somehow become pregnant. I was hoping that that wouldn't happen until after that arrived in Vice City. So now we're going to have to wait here until the baby has been born because I don't want to travel with her while she's pregnant because although with mods, pregnant sins can travel between worlds, when they arrive in their new world, they tend to no longer be pregnant. So we'll have to stick around here, but I will rush through that. I probably won't show you the whole three or four days that we'll be waiting because I'll wait for the imaginary friend doll to turn up as well. And there's Mabel. She's going to be getting married the following day. 
I remembered that they have to get the mail and pay the bills this time. We won't be having another visit from the repo man. There's quite a few butterflies always fluttering around this house. There seems to be quite a few spawners that were placed there when the world was built. They're all set up for the party and the guests have started arriving early, of course. They were invited to arrive at four o'clock but they started turning up a bit after three and the two birthday girls won't be home from school until after five because they have a ballet class to attend first. The car arrived to take Byron to work. He's got an after school job which the game gave him to my annoyance at one point when I wasn't playing him so I told him to quit work. So that solved that problem. Really annoys me how the game puts teenagers into after school work when you've got things you want them to do with them. You can't give them skills if they're stuck at work all the time. Work or school or sleeping. What else? You know, you just don't get to play them. A few sims that have turned up so far are being very noisy. I have invited all of the cousins and their imaginary friends made real. So there should be a lot of sims at this party. There is Charlie with the blue wings dancing on the dance floor. And that's his mother Donna just turned up with the yellow top and the red hair. I just got told that she's pregnant. There's going to be a lot of babies born here shortly. I think I'll skip ahead now to when the two little birthday girls arrive home from school. It'll be another hour or more of sim time before they show up so we don't want to have to just watch this group just hanging around waiting for them. The birthday cakes are out ready. Sometime later it looks like the little girls are on their way home from school now. I'm sure you will recognize quite a few of the sims that are here. On the left there's Byron talking with Elsie. She is the twin sister of Charlie who was dancing on with the blue wings. They're grandchildren of Don and Olivia. And of course Olivia is the founder of this Perfect Genetics Challenge. I don't recognize all of them because some extras have turned up that I didn't invite, such as that one sitting on the ground doing her homework at the moment. The evil little marigold is going to be the first one to blow out her candles. There she is with her yellow wings. She is plant sim fairy hybrid. And Julia is her imaginary friend made real. And then she blows out her candles and we wait for her to spin into her new teenaged form. Let's see what happens. And that's little Julia on the left there all by herself watching. And there she goes. And now she's a teen. And she got the brave trait. Let's see what she does with that. It took me a while to work out. I thought she looked a little different after she aged up to teen. And eventually I realized that she was now a fairy with green skin. She was no longer a plant sim. But I fixed that. And now everybody is going to eat cake. And then we will have Julia's birthday. Having so many guests at the party means that not very many of them is going to get a piece of birthday cake. But there's lots of other food lying around on the various tables that the guests have brought food. And the buffet table has been well supplied with food as well this time. It'll take a while for them all to finish eating and then it will be time for Julia to blow out the candles on her cake. By the time Julia approached her birthday cake the sun was going down it was getting very dark. Luckily I'd thought ahead and put lights all around the yard so we're not going to be in the dark totally. We'll still be able to see the guests and Julia blowing out her candles. And she can grow up to be a teen as well and once she is a teen I will take both of the little girls who are now teens into stylist to give them their new outfits and I'll have to take the evil marigold who's lost her plant sim occult type into creator sim with so I ended up having to do quite a lot to her to be able to have her how I wanted her. I didn't want to spend more days playing the game to wait for Julia to manage to get to A grade at school so I wasn't able to choose her trait when she aged up and she was given the bot fan trait which isn't too bad I'm sure we'll have some fun with her as a bot fan at some point. I see somebody brought a plate of statuesque surprise along as their contribution to the feast. I usually get my genie to summon that. I'm not too sure how else you can get it but I'm sure there are other ways. It's just a plate full of little white freezer bunnies. I think it's something that you can buy from the ice cream truck. 
It's getting late and most of the food's been eaten. Sims are starting to go home. There's not many left at the party. I think it's been a successful party. They seem to have enjoyed it. Next move is I've got to give those two newly aged up teens a new look and I've got to get Marigold as a plant sim again. I've noticed Byron seems to like chatting with the ladies and here he is having a little chat with Julia now that she's aged up. She's a teen just like him. And that's not all I've got in common. They are both imaginary friends made real. The next morning after the party, Don decided to try to fix the dishwasher, but it proved to be a job that was impossible to achieve. So in the end, I just had to replace it. Connie ended up spending most of the day working on the computer and her tummy is getting a little bigger. That afternoon, we all went up onto the roof and there was a wedding. James and Mabel finally decided to tie the knot and we didn't have any guests that were invited. It was just a quiet wedding at home with the household. Not even James's children came to the, see him getting married for the second time. And now we'll get an opportunity to see Julia and Marigold in their everyday outfits after they've been given a makeover. And that's Marigold there with the yellow wings and Julia on the left of Riley and the wedding is taking place right now and that's Denise with the purple hair on the right watching her uncle James get married for the second time this time to a plant sim named Mabel And so they are now married and it's time to throw rice and then they'll come and cut the cake. I wondered if they would be able to cut the cake because when I placed it on the table there was a script error relating to the cake and I just left the cake there. But it looks like he was able to cut it. Unfortunately nobody was able to eat it. However, fortunately there was plenty of food for them on the buffet table. Mabel looks much happier about being married than James does. I can't quite decide if it's because he's having second thoughts and wondering what he did and was it a good idea or not or if it was just because he's grumpy because he is a grumpy sim always been grumpy anyway let's move on and they can have something to eat and one of the things I like to do is to have my plant sim females dress in different colors now Mabel's regular outfit is the default blue and I wanted Marigold to be yellow because of her name and I think Mabel here dressed in white and standing with Marigold it shows they're quite a pretty sight I think different two different colored plant sims I'll see how many more different colors I can get together I don't have much experience with male plant sims yet but I'm working on it once I've had a few of them I might start doing something with their colored outfits as well now I was curious about if James and Mabel would be able to reproduce and I also wanted to get out of this world as quickly as possible so a couple of days before they were due to get married I pollinated her and she's got a forbidden fruit seed in her inventory and while the guests are eating James and Mabel went downstairs and they planted the forbidden fruit seed so I'm going to have to wait in this world now for at least three more days for that to be ready to be picked. They both seem to be happy together. This is Autonomous here. He's tired but he's still staying there talking to her and they're still making friends. A little bit of flirting. Oh and he's still got the energy for a dip kiss. How romantic. But I think it's time he went to sleep. Obviously he disagreed with me because the next thing I saw was them both racing upstairs together and I chased after them to see what they were up to and I got a surprise to discover they were watching the stars together at least they can see stars from where they're sitting but they didn't watch them for long I think they're both tired at the moment so they're going to head off and have some sleep now 
And here is an opportunity for you to have a closer look at Julia after her makeover. She's Marigold's imaginary friend made real, and that's Marigold in the distance and behind her there in the yellow outfit with the wings. It's good to see Daryl sitting back there doing his homework. Now we've got to wait for the babies to arrive before we can leave, so I thought the other Sims can just keep working on skills. There's Marigold trying to f discover a new potion. I'll skip most of the bits where they're just working on skills so we can see the new babies before the end of this episode. But this was unexpected. I haven't had a dog chaser postman in one of my games for a really long time. I hope those letters he dropped weren't important because they just vanished. Bad dog. Here's Mabel taking care of her forbidden fruit seed that's growing into me. I hope she gets a baby and not forbidden fruit, not hanging around for it. Plant another one. It's Connie and Matteo working on learning some more potions. Gotta wait for Connie's baby to be born and for Mabel to pick her baby plant sim from that forbidden fruit seed that she's been tending so carefully. And then we can move Connie and Matteo and their new baby to Vice City and then Don will take the rest of his travelling party direct to Appaloosa Plains after we've finished settling Matteo and Connie and their baby into, into their new Vice City home. As Connie left the room where they were working on the potions, she walked down the steps and all of a sudden the baby was coming and Matteo had to, had to take her to hospital in a big hurry. There's Daryl, he's found out about the baby coming and he's decided to do the right thing. He's panicking. It was time to go to hospital so Connie spun into her everyday outfit and she headed off to the hospital with Matteo. It seems they got there just in time because it wasn't long before I was asked to type in the name of the baby. There's Matteo going in to make sure that she is taken well care of. The wait was quite short before I was asked to enter a name for a baby boy and I chose Jack. Next I had to choose some traits for him and I chose friendly and artistic. We'll see how he goes with that. Next thing Connie emerged from the hospital carrying her little bundle of joy and we had to go home and find a spot for his new crib because it was not going to fit in their bedroom. Back at home Mabel continues to care for her little plant. She chats with it, gets to know it compliments it and it talks back to it too with little thought bubbles now don is a family oriented to sim and i found him nursing baby jack even though jack is not his grandchild and jack turns out to be an imaginary friend born in game his parents were both imaginary friends made real there's a few of the sims from the household having some fun on the ground floor that is byron and Marigold dancing. Mabel was there and so it's Matteo and Connie. Connie's got back into her usual everyday outfit instead of the pregnancy one that she was wearing earlier. And of course Daryl's having fun with the dogs. I found Julia and Don sitting up in the kitchen. We haven't had very many good looks at Julia since she aged up to teen but there she is. It's probably the best look we're going to get I think. Of course Julia is Marigold's imaginary friend made real. Meanwhile Mabel decided to walk down the street to visit Donna and Gary's place. She wanted to have a look at the new baby that's arrived there. This is a baby that I had no say in. It just arrived. That's Gary, father of the new baby. He is Don's son. So the new baby girl is Don's granddaughter. But Don won't be visiting her. Mabel's come down here to see baby Charmaine. She's obviously a fairy and she's got yellow wings but you, all you can see when she's a baby is they're all yellow sparkles. She's a new baby sister for Elsie and Charlie who we've seen. She, were, they were aged up to teen not long after Don and his travelling crew arrived in Mountain Lake. We've seen them at a lot of the parties and things. They've all, all three children of Gary and Donna are all fairies. Donna of course is a fairy as well but that's why the children are fairies. They just seem to keep inheriting her occult state. And back at home Mabel's long-awaited baby is still just growing in the little pot that she planted the seed. I think we're going to have to 
carry this over to the next episode. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see this baby plant sim being picked, well then, if you haven't subscribed yet, it might be a good idea to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on what happens next. So bye-bye for now. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and happy simming.